Even if you had never once worked in game development or even watched a single video on game design, you've heard of narration structures. From the days learning about the story mountain of beginning, middle, and end in elementary school, studying the three-act structure in Freytag's pyramid while endlessly writing essays in high school and college. Narration structures aren't a new thing. They've always been the order and manner in which narrative is presented to a reader, listener, or viewer. But when it comes to writing or presenting narrative in video games, the approach is different from those. It has to be. Video games are not films. They aren't books. They of course pull from both those mediums, various structure elements and tropes that have been well established. Some of that has to do with the fact that books and movies have delivered those things for, well, hundreds of years. Very well, I might add. I still look at a lot of Tolkien's work in the mediums as some of the best narrative I've ever been exposed to. But I think more of it has to do with the fact that compared to those mediums, video games are still in their infancy. I mean, games with narrative really only started coming out in the 1970s. Compare that to movies, which came out in the end of the 1800s and books and stories, well, they've probably been around since well before the 15th century. But despite that, these mediums all have intrinsic characteristics. Books, movies, and video games have plots that determine how the story develops and moves forward. They have main characters that are relatable or interesting, that invoke real feelings in us. Conflict and obstacles that need to be overcome. Dialogue that comes from the character gradually, revealing more of the plot, more of the character's persona and their personality. And of course the settings and themes, time and place, fiction and sci-fi. These mediums share it all and use these as the foundation in which they craft their narrative. Like I was saying, although our beloved medium shares all of these elements, it's different. It's interactive. While a book or movie narrative plays out on its own and is ingested at the rate in which it's presented to us, video game narrative unfolds as a result of the player playing. Every action, every gameplay choice is not made by an author or a director, but by you, the gamer. You control your experience. It's the reason game design as a whole favors interactive stories and plots, because unlike a book or a movie, you are usually the character being set up. And of course, with all this interactivity, it is commonplace for a player to have a split focus between the gameplay they are partaking in and the narrative that is unfolding around them as a result of that gameplay. That's why games usually favor a pacing or parting of narrative moments from the gameplay. Unlike a book that spends sometimes many chapters setting up the first act, many games open up with cinematics, cutscenes, flashbacks, or a single level designed with the intention of setting up that narrative while simultaneously giving the player the ability to play an intense or dramatic opening. This approach is probably so commonplace given that it's the favored narrative start in the larger genre of games, which is arguably action games. Look at Bioshock. We begin with a small little bit of exposition, a time and date, looking over the back of an airplane seat, some vague dialogue, a transitioning background blur, or looking a gift with some text. 30 seconds of showing the narrative, and then boom, it hits you. It quickly transitions into a plane crash into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. You're suddenly underwater, and everything around you is burning. What do you do? The rest is up to you. You take control. You're now playing that story and defining the narrative structure as you go along. But how does game narrative work? We know it draws from other mediums. We know it favors pacing and sometimes parting of its narrative from its gameplay. Play, but how is it structured? Well, it's common for gamers and sometimes even game designers to think that narrative in games only takes into account stories, like in books and movies. It couldn't really be farther from the truth. The story is a key element of narrative in games, and some fantastic example of story-driven games exist. It isn't always the defining factor. In fact, there are entire game genres even that have narratives with very little to no story. Minecraft is one of the largest games of the last decade and can be thought to have no narrative because of how simple the story is. You're a person. Survive. You compare Minecraft's story to the 450,000 words of narrative genius that make up the story in The Witcher 3, which is four times greater than the average novel, by the way, you might start to think story there is vague, almost non-existent. And you'd be right, but it's not about the story. The story gives you enough to serve as a launching point into the rest of the narrative, which you define for yourself by playing. You're a person. Survive is as basic as it gets, yeah. But how you survive isn't. Well, I found myself living above ground as a monster hunter, building structures with wood, starting farms and raising animals. You might tunnel deep underground and start your own mining expedition, fighting off creatures of the Underdark and navigating rivers of flowing lava. Interactivity and player agency make up the narrative aspect of games like Minecraft. 
you've been to a movie theater. Not recently, unfortunately, but you've been to one. You go there, you sit down in your seats, you grab your snacks, and you watch. You have no control over how the narrative unfolds, like I mentioned earlier, only how you ingest it and when. It's interactivity that separates game narrative from other mediums. The understanding a player has that within the limits of a game system that we design, they will have complete control and freedom, player agency. It's my belief that Bethesda owes a great deal of their success to their design philosophy in the Elder Scrolls and Fallout series to really emphasize player agency and the freedom to play and modify the game how they desire to. Both of these series require constant feedback from the player to advance the narrative. The games require choices to be made and then reactions to those choices, pushing them into situations that require further choices and further action, developing the narrative along. And the more interactivity and the more player agency, the player is the driving force behind the story and events that unfold right before their very eyes. When a player kills an orc war boss in Shadow of War, the next plot or arc follows because of their success. You are presented with challenges and are responsible for coming up with ideas and solutions for advancing the narrative. There are three key structures that we present narrative to the players that allow them to do this. The first probably most common structure is linear narrative. These are the most similar to their medium counterparts as they have each player experience the same events each time. Now don't get confused, these are still nowhere near as linear as a book or movie is. Player agency still does exist in these linear titles. Naughty Dog is a studio that is expert in this regard. They use the linear structure of emotional character arcs between gameplay. However, in the gameplay, the character has multiple ways of working through these missions. Linear story with non-linear gameplay, the keynote of the linear narrative, if you will. The second structure is branching narrative. This is when the gameplay decisions the player makes in the narrative actually start to have an effect on the story in some places. The Dragon Age or Witcher series are good representations of this structure because the player choices in the gameplay actually has an effect on the plot and the overarching story in these titles. We see this done in both of these series through branching into multiple alternative storylines. Different players are going to come out with different narrative experiences based on how they played and the choices they made. As a player, make more and more branching decisions, the narrative begins to expand further and further around them. The Bloody Baron questline from Witcher 3 is, I think, a profound example of this. And then you have your third narration structure, which is what we call open narrative. This is your sandbox games, your open world games, Minecraft, The Elder Scrolls. We drop a player in our world and give them complete freedom. What quests they do, what order they do them in, there's truly a scale scary amount of possible scenarios any given player could find themselves in. It is quite a challenge for designers as they really have minimal control over how something will unfold. Unlike the previous narrative structures, this type of game plays out extremely different on a case-by-case -case basis, basically meaning the player creates their own story based on choices they've made and what content they've chosen to do or not do. It's this narrative type that is the reason videos like I Beat Skyrim with Only a Fork exist, or why you and your friend will both play through the same Elder Scrolls game just to have them say, what Oblivion Gate's opening over Tamriel are you talking about? This structure is the closest thing we have to complete freedom of narrative in games. And I think the greatest example of the differences between games and the other mediums. And there you have it, narrative structures in video games. This video wasn't even close to covering everything there is. There's so much more to talk about in this topic. And each of those categories could probably be broken down into even more subcategories. This is the basics of narration structures in games. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing me break down the specific structures further in separate videos. Let me know in the comments which narrative structure is your favorite. I'm really interested to find out. Until next time, this was Can't Resist Tris. Keep designing, never lose your passion, and I will see you guys in the next game design talk. Bye guys.